So I'm trying to up the number of minis I have, even though it's definitely not a spell uh, I would use much. Though, there's enemies that can die from being minied or toted, I think, in this game. Here I'm trying to decide as a red mage what kind of abilities to give them. And my um, general idea is you could give him all the abilities you would normally use if you're black mage, like your status and deb debilitating abilities. And uh, if this were a different kind of game, yes. If it wasn't a turn-based game like this, there's Final Fantasies where debuffing is good, and there's ones where there's not. And a lot of the earlier games, debuffing is not worth the time. So I'm giving him as a red mage, basically elemental coverage, and then like basic healing. Backup healing, basically. Healing in the menu. Yes, that lake restores your HP and MP. One revives a dead party member. I think the other one reverses statuses. That guy will give you uh, many if you end up not having it in your hand. So you can technically put many on everybody and then he'll still give you an extra one. So, we're all gonna be many, so the physical is not gonna do any damage. So, putting them in the back row is a good way to reduce damage. I don't really feel like re changing everyone's class, so I'll just have Ludif throw items, since I have infinite items on anyway. And now I have to find the entrance to Tosis, which isn't as obvious as it looks, it's in the forest somewhere. But you, you're scared that you're gonna get into an encounter while you're minied before you get into the area. And of course, we're doing Mognet. You're getting letters based on who is the leader in your party. But I'm doing Lunif because he's the main character for most of the way because I want to make sure I get Topapa's last letter first because that gives us an extra class. The best class in the game. It gives us a quest to get it. And it's, you can actually get it quite early, but the actual job itself isn't useful until a very late game. Later game than you would normally get, actually. Wandering. 
There's a lot of hidden items in this doctor's room. Some pretty useful ones, like the stabs, the cast spells. Or the... Is it the staff, or is it the rod? It's the staff that casts the weaker spell. The rods are the ones that cast the level, the secondary elemental spell, like fire up. And what I'm supposed to do is in that room, I'm just a little bit confused. Obviously, a Cura is a very useful spell, so I'll put that on both our white and our red mage. I'm a gnome, this is my home. Basically, you have to give this guy the item in order for it to find a hidden passage to move on. But it takes me a good minute to um, realize that you, it's not just an extra item, it's storyline progression you have to give this guy the item for. An item you actually can't buy here, so if you don't have an antidote, you're fucked. So make sure you have an antidote when you come here. Unless you want to do some serious backtracking. Turning the, I think I'm turning these eye drops into antidotes now. Show my way around having to backtrack immensely. See, that's something really frustrating and unnecessary, I think. At least sell it in the dang shop.
So, moving on into the actual dungeon. I don't know. Why am I running out? What could I possibly want? Even I, <laughs> I... I have no idea what I was running out there for. Phoenix Downs, very, very useful in this game. And here is our little dungeon, the Tosis Tunnel. That's why I moved those items to the top so they're quicker to access. But that's okay. Dash is pretty strong for this part of the game. Both the Sword Attack and Bandera will take out enemies. We don't need to be many anymore when we're in the Vikings Cove. Yar, Vikings we are. Or used to be. Dash has a couple conversations where he's basically just teaching you some basic gameplay mechanics rather than talking about his storyline. Spark Dagger. That's a pretty useful one. A team full of Vikings. Well, I don't know. I find it weird that the Nepto Dragon here, um, it's a recolor of regular enemies. <laughs> but I guess you never get a legitimate boss fight with it anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Don't you mean bizarro? There's my reference to all 0 0.3. See, I'll have 21, 2021 fans watching this right now. All one third of a person. Thank you. 
There's a lot of good hidden items in this Viking Cove. You just walk around in the shadows a bit. And obviously you're seeing where they are as I'm getting them, but just saying. None of them are going to help you fight the boss, so don't try to fight the boss. You just get two unbeatable bosses in a row. They're really trying to make you feel really weak, hence having this extra party character around to help you out. Like, you may have got these crystals, but you're still just little punks at this point in the game. Here we go. This is the Viking boss that's asking for your help. So just because I'm feeling a little saucy, I decided to see if I could actually fight the Nepto Dragon, hence me putting in a quick save right here. I'll just go ahead and save in a while at that point. Here's a little advice, you can't beat it. Even if you beat it, the thing is, if you take a step into that space again, you'll just have to refight it. It doesn't go away, even if it's beaten. Which is very hard, which is, you know, you have to have insane stats in order to do. And because it went ahead and, uh, because it's so fast, I can't even really run away. Oh, why did I try to attack it again? Why didn't I try to escape? I just gave myself a game over. It's the one game over I got in the game. I, I thought I tried to escape and got hit. Why did I try to hit it again? That's dumb. I'm a dumbass. Maybe I just decided it was better just to load up than having to uh, run back and heal. You know, I just kind of got why they pair Rifia with Desh, like, friendship-wise. It's because they're both trying to run away from something. But in the end, they decide to come back to it. Interesting. I mean, it's not really deep or anything like that, but... It's, a, it's like... It, Angus has Sarah, and Ark has Aelus. I always wonder why Rifia, they always have her harping on Desh and stuff like that. It's because he's staying away from someone who cares about him to do other things when she's doing the same thing. Hmm. Just, just now realizing that. But yes, we have another mini section. Honestly, I think it's a neat quirk, but uh, it's a negative status effect. No one wants to play around with that for very long. So, between the mini and the toting, eh. just I think you should just be able to have the spell, and it's just like a thing that happens in order to get into areas, you know? Not something you have to cast twice every time there's an instance. You need that spell stops. More like destroy.
Yeah, these leveling up. 15 seconds every fight. That's not good. I'm trying to figure out which hole I should go into, if any. Shell helm, shell armor. At that point, I was noticing I didn't have infinite item on. So I wanted to make sure I didn't use up the last of my items. Serpent Sword, that's one of the three elemental swords. So, good weapons to have for a good portion of the game. Late game, the difference in damage between them and late game swords doesn't isn't made up by the elemental exploitation, but they're very good for, from early to mid game. Especially since you can switch equipment on the fly in this one. Do I wish I had teleport? <laughs> and here is our next boss. Our next boss. Oh, what is this? Like the second boss that we can actually beat? The giant rat. Squeak, who you be? When you think about it, you're mini. So he's actually just a. He's just a regular sized rat. Dash coming in to add some damage in. And that's one dead rat. The old Nepto Eye. The old Nepto Eye.
Now all that's left is run back to the entrance to the dungeon. Here he is saying the same shit. He thought he'd say something different right here, but he doesn't. I wish they would make those a more, bit more adaptive to the events happening in game. Those damage items are very, very useful when you have infinite numbers of them early game. Thankfully the dungeon's actually a lot smaller. I just fudged around too much. Counter rate isn't too high in here. Dragon's nice again. That's the first fang item we get. Man, that actually is part of something later in the game, but I, I forgot we got that one so early. He also has a sword attack, but he seems to definitely use Thundara more.
And this is the victory music that often plays when you've completed whatever ordeal uh, the area is having. And now we have the Enterprise.